I'll lead us off here. What's your favorite field drill training aid for increased rotation to reduce that in to out path? I see a lot of, you know, with the in to out path, you know, you see the player, you know, the arms kind of fall, the spine backs up a little bit to the right. And then from there, there's no direct, there's really no place for the club to go other than from in to out. So the success of trail bend, lead shoulder gets high. So what I'll tell people here and, and to help them kind of turn the corner better there, A, we want to get the shaft still pitched back a little bit, get the shaft laid down and get that lead shoulder working a little bit more down and around rather than falling back this way. And oftentimes when they do that, they feel the right hip kind of sitting a little bit more. There's less of this bump and launch laterally. It's kind of this sit in the right hip, left shoulder more level through the zone. Now the club can turn the corner back around to the left neutralizing that in to out path. It's interesting sidebar here with Rory because Rory, when he struggles, he struggles with that in to out path. He'll get going too much in the out. You look at him last week. Um, he drove it well, but his irons were terrible. He actually lost four stroke scan approach and one. That's scary. I mean, that's scary how dominant he was off the tee. What that tells me he drove it well. He's got that attack angle working up which helps neutralize that in out path. So he was kind of in that, in that window where he could still hit that little draw, but his irons were still probably a little too in to out. The reality with Rory is he'll try to hit a lot of fades. You know, he's, he's trying to hit a lot of fades. That's his feel, but it actually just brings his path Shaheen, like back to like positive one. So he feels like he's hitting a fade, but the ball still has a slight draw to it. That's often the case, right? With good players. I was just having this conversation with Bull Hostler like a couple of weeks ago, and he told me the exact same thing. Literally, mm -hmm. his tendency is his hands kind of drop behind him, and he gets trapped a little too stuck from the inside. And so he likes to feel almost like a low fade in order just to neutralize the rightward path. doesn't mean he's actually going to hit a low fade. It just means he's going to take an extreme draw bias and kind of reduce it to a stock little draw. Uh, but in order to do that, he's got to feel, obviously, that fade pattern to shift the path a little bit more left relative to where he was as a right-handed golfer. Yeah, and the, and the feedback you get is, well, why is he trying to hit a fade? He's always hit a draw. And it's like he's, he needs to feel more of that to bring the cone in. He's feeling a fade. That's right. By no means hitting a stock fade with his irons. What, what can you share with us that is so magical to all everyone when they watch this, this player swim? I mean, his rhythm's been so good. His balance, the whole – it's like Ernie L's, but smaller frame – um, but like, just, just talk to us about Louis A. Stazen and how this swing works on a beautiful, heavy, a beautiful, heavy hit on the golf ball. You know, mm. I, I think, you know, meant so, some people that are listening might've had interest in like, listen to what Louis and I have done. I think given some people into a little bit of a different insight, you know, when, when, when you play golf with Louis or you, you know, you, you maybe, you know, I play golf for them and he, I would say, well, what do you think of my stuff? He'll always go back to his drills, you know, and he, you know, it's funny that he has his own set of little things that he does. He hits golf balls with his feet together. He's very, very aware from like from face on of his balance. He makes sure that the line from his forehead through his nose, down through his chest, through his pelvis, through his ankles, everything's very, very balanced. And he hits balls with his feet together and he works on his strike a little bit. And he does that really just to kind of find things. And then He'll take a little bit of a, a, a gentle step away with his feet and he'll have a slightly wider stance and then he'll move it. So his awareness of balance and his awareness of posture are you know, incredibly almost unique to me. And if you, um, if you take him back down to his, his starting posture, a lot of the time when we're, you know, when we're working, I'm acting as a policeman and he's sort of saying to me, listen, am I standing the correct distance from the ball? Am I well balanced? And if you bring him into his, his setup, you know, a lot of people, and John Ram is like this, a lot of great ball strikers like this, he really gets close, so close to the golf ball that if, if most amateurs stood there, they'd be pretty uncomfortable. Now, Louis is unusual because he's got slightly longer arms and mm -hmm. shorter spine, longer legs. But you know, he gets into the golf ball, creating room with his pelvis behind him, right through the centers or even through the, 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 the heels, uh, towards the heels of the centers of his feet. We see that with John Ram. We see that with Sergio Garcia. We see that obviously with Louis Oosthuizen. You see that with Paul Casey. A lot of really, really good ball strikers get into their posterior chain and have a starting position where they have to create space. And Louis is a starting position where he has to create space. And you know, we work a lot on on his on his setup 
He's acutely aware of his alignment. Uh, he's acutely aware of the fact that, you know, again, from a strength and conditioning standpoint, sometimes it, there's things that will make him aim a little to the right. Uh, you know, we look at that an awful lot. You know, and then from there, it's, you know, he knows he'll talk about when his golf swing feels too fast or feels too slow. And oftentimes when it feels too fast, it's because his right side hasn't loaded up correctly. Mm. Um, so he does a lot of work in making sure that he can load the right side of his pelvis towards the top of his backswing, you know, getting that nice, strong depth um, at the top of his swing. And then when that's done, I think that, you know, he's really just fluid. Um I'm still, you know, he creates a surprising amount of power. Yeah. Very, very heavy hit on the golf ball. You know, from face on, you can see here uh, something that I'm studying a little bit. You know, as you wind him up to the top of your backswing, um, especially with that little elbow brace on there, you'll, you'll detect some sneaky little arm bend in his golf swing. Mm. Um, his, his lead arm bends a little bit um, as, he, as he gets towards the very, very top of the backswing. And, and definitely then re-straightens or reflexes through the impact area. And there is no doubt that that's a, that's a speed generator, something that, you know, we used to talk about JB Holmes doing an awful lot. Um, but for the amount of effort that Louis seems to put into it, goodness me, he gets a lot of bang for his buck. Um, yeah. and then, and it's, it's, a, it's a joy to watch him, to watch him hit shots. And he had a great year last year. I'm looking forward to, oh. you know, to see, to seeing him in Phoenix and getting going again. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a golf swing that I feel my responsibilities to help, you know, help him with his feels, uh, be responsible to, you know, knowing that it's a thing of great beauty and balance that you're working with and, and, uh, trying to ensure that you're, you know, you're, you're thoughtful in your approach and not over, you know, overdoing it because, you know, you give a pseudo genius like Louis the capacity to figure it out on his own and, and nine times out of 10, he'll do that. All right, let's, let's get right after it here. So I'm going to, I'm going to bring in, um, Mr. Kokrak swing here. And I, I still can't believe that this video was taken with an iPhone of, of Drew. I mean, it's just like absolutely perfect. This is at the CJ cup, right? This was CJ cup, uh, yeah. Tuesday or Wednesday program something. Yep. Yeah, I think that's and number two, three. I want to tee up here, Drew, with 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 Jason to start with because you and I have talked about Jason's swing before, and Jason has to see the ball. And correct me if I'm wrong. He he wants to see the ball start right and draw left every single time. And when it's not doing that, yeah, then he knows there's something wrong with his swing. Right? He doesn't want to see the ball go straight. He doesn't want to see the ball fade. He wants to see it start right and draw. So when it's not starting right and drawing, I heard him say, I have a checklist that Drew and I put together. I right. want to start there with the checklist. So we start with his alignment because if he starts aiming right, then he'll start trying to pull it. And then as soon as he pulls it as a shallower of the club, he starts blocking it. And then he just starts hitting it right. And then everything, you know, he starts hitting push cuts because he's under the plane, you know? So he may feel like he's steep, but he's not. He's just he's just aiming right, pushing it right. So we'll, we'll go through kind of his head movement, the backswing, a little bit of his leg work. And the good thing with, um, you know, Jason, he's such an athletic, raw guy that I don't think he gets credit for being as athletic as he is. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy can, you know, he can dunk a basketball. He can, you know, the guy is, uh, he's 6'4", and he's a strong, big Cleveland, Ohio, Ohio guy. And... Mm -hmm. You know, his hand-eye coordination is very good if you see him do any other sports. So he is very, very talented at feeling his pattern and refining it without without really getting too overly technical of like, well, P3.5, my left arm's, you know, not inside the baseline enough or anything like that. So he's not one of those guys where he wants to look at video every day and go, if he's sending me video, I know he needs he needs me to talk to him that day. Like if I'm getting a video, we're going. I'm like, uh, like Houston. I'm like, mm -hmm. this is the most I've ever gotten in video of him ever in in like five years. So, right, because in Houston, he was like early in the week. He was talking about how bad he was hitting it. We were. And I then, was on the I was on the phone with him during this practice round and his caddy D Rob, mm -hmm. basically talking him through every shot in a practice round on a Tuesday. Kind of going, um, try this feel, do this feel, let's go back to this, check your right hip, make sure you're not getting, you know, a little slidey off of it or whatever you're doing. And, um, you know, his checklist is when he drives it good, uh, it's, it's obviously he's going to gain strokes T to green and 
now he's such a good putter and he's a, like last year's iron play probably wasn't as good as the year before but the year before i think he made it to east lake and he was like second approach to the green for the year so his iron game was phenomenal yeah so his so so the, the swing checklist so the alignment yep. first and then yeah, so, so where does he go from there so we'll work on his takeaway he always likes to feel it outside his hands on the takeaway he doesn't like to get it you know, quote unquote, inside of P2. He's not going to be parallel to his hand line right there. He's going to have that outside move mm -hmm. with the club head. And if you notice, his thumb comes off the shaft. <laughs> right. So And, and it's always done that. Always. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And he's always done that. And then um, as soon as he kind of gets that feel of where the club is there, mm -hmm. he's going to, he, he likes to feel like he loads kind of into his right heel and he sits into it more, quote unquote. He, He's not a big rotator guy back. He he definitely straightens his right leg some amount, um, but he likes to feel the pressure and where the pressure goes in his backswing. Let me ask you this, Drew. When you so so the pressure into the right heel and <clears throat> the straightening of the right knee is that has he always done that or is that something he's developed? He, he used to do it a lot, so he actually okay. used to almost lock his right leg. Okay. So he used to almost straighten it too much as a kid. Um, so he would, he would actually consciously kind of do the opposite of what everybody's doing is, is trying to, to keep it. So it doesn't straighten too much sometimes, right? Because he'll load into that thing, like Sam Snead hip ankles. Like if you look at his pelvis, um, he can get very, he can get very steep pelvis and steep shoulders from, mm -hmm. you know, and, and he'll get two vertical, you know, the pelvis and the shoulders will get very, you know, left shoulder will get down a lot and all that stuff. So. He's kind of different in the fact that he likes to not overextend and rotate his hips a ton because he, as, as a kid, he used to rotate. A, he probably was John Daly, you know, pass parallel long across, mm -hmm. had a huge shallowing move coming down. So With backswing wise, he hates, you know, he's got these certain feels that work for him mm -hmm. um, and we'll measure them and we'll, you know, body track or whatever, just keep an eye on it. But he's not, yeah. he's not overly technical of like, I have to have this movement to be perfect. So a good backswing, let's talk about that, kind of a preference here. Okay. That's uh, a good segue. A, for you, a good backswing or a good turn, let's say, in the backswing is, is what? I like an upper body that winds up, that starts the backswing, and as your upper body turns, it winds your lower body up, and it turns your right, we're talking about a right-handed player here, mm -hmm. winds into your right hip, and you go as far as the person's range of motion allows, okay? And I think that, uh, you know, that's where I start with players of all ability. I try to get their upper body to wind up over a stable lower body. And then, you know, we know from biomechanics now and all the stuff that's out there. And, uh, you know, I do a bunch of stuff with Dr. Scott Lynn. And, it, you know, everybody's mm -hmm. different. Every, everybody gets different amounts of pressure back there. Um and I like to go refine that after the fact. But when I start with a player, especially developing a young player, maybe like a junior, a 14, 15, 16-year-old, I like to really start with the pivot and learn to get them to wind their upper body up into their lower body, create more pressure in that right side, really wind into their right hip and their right butt cheek, uh, feel that right butt cheek turn back. We always talk about like if you had a yardage book in your back pocket, right back pocket, it would feel like it's turning and driving back into the wall behind you. But those are the, you know, the common things. And I, you know, try to get rid of a lot of excess arm movement that happens when the pivot stops. You know, mm -hmm. I see folks that don't have much turn and then the arms lift and move and try to get the club to where they feel like their backswing should go. So I try to get the club and the arms and your body matched up as your pivot, your upper body winds up over your lower body. Let's take a look at a swing here. Um, we're going to put it up and this is a face on swing. And I think you have to look at face on with champ because... That's where you just kind of see all this, you know, lat rubber band kind yeah. of, yeah. <laughs> you know, his lower body is going this way, his upper here, his neck's laying, and it's just all kinds of just interesting things to look at. But the one thing that always stands out to me is is Champ probably more than any other player on the tour. He hits it with the most forward shaft lane. Even his driver, you can see there's some shaft lane there, and of course they adjust the loft and the kick and all these things with the club to accommodate that. But the amateur player, they don't normally have enough shaffling. They need more forward shaffling. Oh. Let's let's walk through a little bit 
um, some things that you're doing that are helping amateurs get some forward shaft length. Okay. What are some things that you're doing oh. in the swing? Yeah, that are helping. Oh, sorry, them. sorry. Yeah. yeah. So um, I would say that probably one of the most common things I see where people are losing leg um, in the downswing would be like an overswing or a little too much separation. You know, the arms get a little too, you know, trapped across the body. And then they come to pull down with their body. Their arms are still kind of uh, stuck. They're not in front of their chest. So then the body has to stall. And then everything has to kick down at the bottom where they, they just kind of fire their hands and their arms at the bottom of the swing. And uh, because of that, everything has to catch back up. So like shaft is straight up and down or even the club head is even overtaking the hands before they uh, get the contact with the golf ball. So I would say that's one of the most common ones that I see. Do you ever do little swings with, with students where, you know, just little like half punch shot, chip, pitch, whatever, um, yeah. Yeah, help absolutely. them feel that? Absolutely. That's probably one of my favorite drills to do, half swing drill. Um, I call it the impact zone, usually whenever I'm referring to it. So just half swings, learning the proper impact, you know, like dynamics, like how to, how to have the body, the chest, the hips a little bit more open. Uh, relative to where the ball is, and, and that's what really helps get the hands in front of the uh, of the ball at impact too. You got to have a little bit of uh, rotation from the body. Do you feel like that the amateur kind of gets the more of the feel through the uh, the right arm? Like you know, we want we know we want the right wrist bent, right elbow bent, yeah, at impact, and then if you go to the left hand. Like okay, the left wrist is flat or a little flexed. Yeah. Left arm's kind of straightening out. You know, yeah. which, which of those dynamics do you feel like, is it more like, okay, let's focus on the right, or is it more focus on the left, or is it kind I think of with, with most people being, you know, dominant right hand, you know, obviously if they're swinging right hand too, I think it helps, it helps them feel that um, a lot better. They definitely, obviously they're working in unison, so uh, sometimes the new feel of, you know, have feeling like the bow with the, with the left hand can be something they can grab onto a little bit quicker if they've already kind of tried that right hand feel. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say for the most part, most people are going to be able to feel it a little bit better with their right hand because for the most part, that's usually what's firing like really hard at yeah. the bottom that's, uh, you know, where all that pressure is coming from to kick that club, trying to get it back to square or, right. yeah. Yeah. And, and, and oftentimes they have to do that, right? They have, they have to kind of let it go in order to yeah. get the face around to some mm -hmm. degree of acceptability to keep the ball in front of them. Yeah, you know where like if the face is open and they hit it like this, the ball would go thirty yards right. So they yeah. have to let it go. Exactly, it's all kind of cause and effect, right? Mm -hmm. and I would say another really common one I see is whenever the body slides too far in front of the golf ball. So they're doing you know like a casting move with the right hand at the bottom to try to get it, you know, just so they can make contact with the ball. Basically, if their body that's a good point because you know we we go back to um, Cameron Champ swing and like when you look at Champ swing. Um, you know, obviously the forward shaft line stands out, but, but the other thing that, that kind of stands out to me is, is he kind of traces into the right heel a little bit. Like you can see, like, there's a little like flow into the right side. And then when he starts down, that you can almost kind of see his right glute kind of sitting a little bit kind of down into the right heel. Like he doesn't launch mm -hmm. laterally, like, you know, where you launch, now your arms get left behind. He kind of sits, keeps his belt buckle and the sternum relationship there's not a lot of side bend nope. which kind of gets it i would you know helps the elbow get back out in front and then he can just turn and hit it what what stands out to you with with his pivot uh, i would like i mean you kind of hit it right on uh, on the head there whenever you said how he keeps his hands in front of him and i think that's the key to uh him being able to have all that body rotation but still have so much good control of the club mm -hmm. you know um so his body pivot is you know tremendous on the way back and on the way down seeing like the left shoulder, the left hip, like stay low in transition um, so that he can have his arms and his hands kind of drop down in front of him a little bit more. Um, and then he's able to just rotate pretty much as, as much as he wants really coming through impact. You're working with a player who like a Jason or like a Jimmy or a, a Phil who's carrying that down, right? What are some of the matchups to that? Like we, you know, the word matchups we hear a lot, like they're carrying that extension down. The face is not square. Like there has to be some face rotation there. What are some things that are gonna match up to that through the impact zone that might be different than say Victor and DJ who are more flexed 
and the shaft is more pitched back and the face is more closed. Like talk about the difference between those two because they're very different, at least in my eyes and in my understanding and talking about the difference in those two shaft pitch, wrist angles, face angles. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, in general, one, you typically don't see like guys rotate as much um, when they kind of have like more of the release pattern you're talking to. Like they're not as open at impact mm -hmm. oftentimes. Um, you know, like there's always like, you know, what are they doing at, at, at the bottom with the wrist to like square mm -hmm. the club up. So like stuff like that's halfway down can kind of be misleading. The face can look more open and then down at the bottom, they could add like more flexion very last minute and go from like radial to ulnar very rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, like just the way the wrist angles could just like come more down and out very rapidly if that match it up. Um, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's especially when you talk, cause like there's, there's the, the, the golfer who's not necessarily like top, top player who is trying to get better and you're trying to funnel them into a pattern and saying, how do you sort of match that up without really a precedent of them playing like world-class golf. So you're not really kind of like, you don't have any sort of reference for them. You're kind of like the reference is just like other ball strikers. Yeah. Um, a guy like Jason, like he's been a really good ball striker at some point. So, you know, to understand kind of what he would do, what the club looked like and what his wrist singles looked like when he was driving at his best or playing his best, there's already that precedent out there. So for him, it's more of like, look, you know, and, and then also to look at swings when he wasn't playing necessarily great, just kind of when he gets into a little bit of funk. So understanding those sort of trends for him, mm -hmm. then it becomes saying, hey, look, you have this precedent of both good and bad. You're trying to stay away from the bad, but you know, with different constraints, constraint or different sort of like body motion, body motion that that's going to feel better to your body. So, you know, for him, it's, it's more of like his matchup is just sort of like what he already did. Right. Which is kind of what you described. It's sort of yeah. like a little bit on the steeper side and never gets like, you know, it, it um, you know, he, he also ha hit a draw when he's playing his best. Um, and mm -hmm. sort of sometimes it's also fitting kind of like, what is the shot shape that just fits their eye? Like you can, yeah. You can you can sort of say, hey, look, this is how we want things to look. But if it doesn't have a ball flight that like he's gonna feel comfortable playing with, as soon as he gets in tournament conditions, it all goes out the window. So now you're like starting over from scratch. Um, so do they, tend to, do they tend to take on more side bend to the right through impact? The guys that carry the extension down longer, and then as you said, they kind of go to that owner quickly, where the handle will stand up a little bit. Right, the handle will kind of be a little higher. Mm -hmm. And then they'll take on a little more side into the right. I would assume, especially if they're trying to draw it, like Jason. Yeah, I mean, with Jason, like trying to draw it um, for sure. Like that was his pattern, right? It was it was fairly restricted, like you said, in the lower body. It was steep in transition, and then he would kind of side bend to the right to try to get the club more from the inside, and then have it have his overall release pattern. Um, you know, I think yeah, you'll see that. You'll see guys just sort of stand up out of it oftentimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there's oftentimes a way for their body to kind of maybe not open up as much and, right. and in a sense, slow down to help accommodate some of that, that club releasing a bunch. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're more square with your upper body, like something's kind of got to go up to make room for everything. So instead of, you know, you're opening up and your left shoulder working around, it's more of like everything starts to come up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you can do things like you still have some motion in your left in the scapula, so you can add some shrug. There's ways to kind of maybe circumvent some of that air quotes early extension. But again, even early extension is something that's been so demonized. I mean, Payne Stewart, Jack <laughs> Nicholas. I mean, there's lots of guys who had air quotes early extension that were like world-class ball strikers. Yeah. So, so in above itself is not something I think that should be kind of like avoided at all costs, which I think right. is a little bit of a trend right now, but, but, um, but yeah, I mean, and, and even like to, to say that like guys who, who have that flexion or more open at impact don't have a ton of owner deviation. A lot of them do. Like if you look at a lot of guys, they'll have like their, their right arm might be more flexed. The guys who are more open, but their wrists are still very down through the ball. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like, you know, you're always getting a low handle type of version of that. <laughs> um, now, right. now you, you may be getting a lower handle because your body's not standing up, but relative to what your wrists are doing and how that puts the, the relationship of the shaft to your lead arm and, you know, what that does from like a scoring mechanism, um, it's not really a low handle version of that. So, uh, I don't, I mean, it's just, <laughs> oh, no, that's an interesting point. No, that's, that's a, that's, a, I would put Brooks in that category, mm -hmm. right? Like Brooks is, you know, he's coming down and, and he's not flying open. Yeah. 
Brooks isn't flying open like say a Victor. Yeah. Or a DJ. Yeah. And I mean, I think I think I saw what is Brooks like ten degrees open with his upper at impact. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's 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 minimal. Yeah. And he's probably taken that on a little higher and kind of down the line release a bit. Yeah. Um, where you know Victor's kind of bringing it and opening and and throwing the frisbee kind of around the corner, you know, yeah. back around over here. So yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I you know it doesn't mean that when you go there and it's there that you're just going to rotate and the handle's going to be low. Chris, I don't think I, I'm not sure I've ever I've ever hit a shot and not early extend. Mm. And you're a scratch golfer, right? So it's yeah. like you know, again, like any seven handicap. Would love to hit it like you. <laughs> yet, yet, you know, yet sometimes the pathway that people feel, you know, somewhat married to is to get that seven handicap or to not early extend. And it's like, okay, well, if Travis is a scratch golfer and does early extend, is that really the path of least resistance for that person? It may be, but it also may not be. And that and that's just kind of the point that I'm, I'm more or less trying to make. Yeah. Yes, I guarantee it. Okay. Hands up, right? And turn. Leave your hands up. Don't like not down. Like I don't hear you say down a lot. I know what you're doing. I know what you're. I know we've we've had this conversation. But is that something you get challenged on a lot with your teaching? Where it's it's like I, leave I your hands up and turn. I never get challenged by any of my players, but I get challenged by every coach. And right. I mean, I could go through every name, and I don't even mind. I, I mean, Butch would be one that would say, "Why why do you keep your legs flex, or why do you keep your hands up?" Dana Dahlquist, uh, I, Jeff Smith would not be one of them. He actually was totally down. Um, Trackman Maestro loved it. I mean, but there's a shit ton of really good coaches out there yeah. that question it. And I and I say, listen, here's the deal. There's a difference between down. Let me see if I can get my camera to be in a good position for my eye. So if I went up to like right about here, my arms are on the right side of my body. Okay. Is that right side of your eye? Yep. Looks left to me. Okay, good. I'm on opposite side. So I'm like him. So that's still on the right side of my body, correct? Yep. If I go up to the top, for me, my arms are on the right side of my body. Now, does that mean I want to pull my arms down behind me here, behind my seam line, or do I want to move them back in front? Is there a difference? Huge difference. Yeah. Okay. My arm's in front of me. Okay. Then I get down in my stance. That's where I'm at. That's a huge difference. But was there a pull down of that move? Was that a pull down? No. no. So when my legs get into a position where I'm here, I have to pull them down. That's what the definition of getting pinned, okay? But if I went up into a position, had depth, my shoulder wasn't out of its socket, it was in its socket, and I started to rotate around and didn't slide, where would my arm go? It bounced right off my chest. Now, I could also, as that happened, get my arm to be like this. I could, or I could pop it back in front, and then it's going to spring where? Right off my chest. So it's going to go boom, and then it's going to jump off my chest. Now, what my arm's doing, my trail arm, is highly dictated by my club face. If my face was shut, where would my arm want to move? Want to move a lot more. If my face is open, it's almost always going to want to move that way. So dictated by face and what you've done prior to all these actions are hugely different. So if you want to go up here and not you personally, and pull your arms down and then turn, be my guest, you're going to get roped on by everybody who does it. Now, when you see someone like like uh, Bryson DeChambeau doing it on the range and everybody starts jacking him off, I start laughing <laughs> because he doesn't do that in his swing. Right. It's hilarious. He's up here and it's up anything. He's a little steep, his arms like this. He's up, it's like blocked up on yeah. his chest, just like Rory, just like DJ, just like anybody who's awesome at golf. That anybody who smashes the ball, not one long driver, you're gonna see him doing this shit. So I look at Josh Koch, and Josh Koch goes, Why do people keep telling people to pull him down? Well, does that mean that you can't pull him down? It just means just like anyone who says someone's hips are too fast, just means you don't know shit about a golf swing. It's all it means. So when you say your hips are too fast. No. When I see a player going, you've got to get your arms down. That means that you never had your hips go back. And all of a sudden they fire. Yeah, your hips have gone back 20 and your shoulders have gone back 90 or whatever. 
and all of a sudden they have a head start or you start to slide them just means that now all of a sudden let's get your arms down so they don't get stuck now how about fix your pivot in the backswing and then get things sequenced that'd be the proper way to do something and that's what makes me laugh is when somebody goes oh your hips are too fat now you only turn them 20 and your shoulders are 90 and you slid and spun okay right. Now you're stuck. So your coach goes, get your arms down first because I don't know how to fix your real golf swing because that's the easiest equation. Yeah. That Let's talk about a short game because you guys have done some work on that. Uh, Pete Cowan doesn't work with Victor Hovland on a short game. Jeff Smith does as <laughs> we were talking off there. <laughs> sometimes you hear some weird names working with people, but Jeff works on everything with Vic. And you guys, have, you guys have made some substantial changes really over the last year in the way Victor go as a, goes about his technique, in particular the club face, lead wrist condition. Um, you know, Victor's a – you look at him, he's a flex lead wrist player, shaft lean, he's thumping it, he's compressing it. That can have its downside in short game. Walk the viewers through what you changed in the way Victor is going about, just in general. I know there's all kinds of different shots, but just in general kind of the stock pitch shot around the green. Yeah, so like if you're familiar with Victor's swing, you know, most of the time, most players in their short game are going to mimic what they do in their full swing. And, and even in their putting, it kind of mimics their full swing. And so, you know, Victor's known for a lot of lead wrist flexion or bowing, arching of his wrist, if you will, in the course of his backswing. And that is a, a weapon as it relates to hitting the ball far and, and straight and fast and moving the ball fast. But it makes it a hindrance a little bit when you're trying to slow the ball down, which is what we're doing around the green. So, um, you know, a lot of people have commented on TV about how he gets the club face shut in the backswing. And that's not really the thing that causes the problem um, in the short game. It's when you flex your lead wrist so much uh, in the backswing, not only does the face shut, if you will, but it moves the club head way low into the inside of the hands. So it's sort of under plane, if you will. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is once you make that move and the club head is low and inside of the hands, it changes where the bottom of the arc is. That low point moves back and it makes the club approach very sort of shallow and from the inside. The problem with that is to, to, to not hit behind the golf ball, the golfer then starts to sort of thrust the handle more forward through the strike to, to move the low point forward. And that's where all the loft and bounce comes off the club. Um, you know, Victor was fine hitting a lot of low bump and run shots with his old technique. But the problem was he couldn't elevate the ball very much and he couldn't spin it at all. He only had like fastballs coming out in a short game and he was really poor from the rough. Mm -hmm. um, you can't be coming in super shallow and from the inside with not much loft on the club to play at all from the rough or from any kind of a short-sighted scenario. So all I've tried to do over the last year is essentially minimize a little bit of the change in wrist flexion and to try to keep it a little bit more neutral. Um, I don't have him trying to twist the face open or anything like that. It's just simply trying to slow down the rate of wrist flexion through the course of his backswing. And to, you know, to put it in layman's terms, it keeps the club a little bit more on plane in the backswing. Uh, it keeps it a little bit more on plane on the downswing and it allows him to get his wrist into extension quicker into the follow through, which allows him to present loft to the ball and sort of the bounce to the ground and, and add some speed at the bottom where he can create a little bit more friction and a little bit more spin. So I guess we've made it to where he can hit the higher, softer shots, you know, more on command. And yeah.